All right, guys, welcome back to the garage, or welcome to the garage. It's Tush coming at you. And uh, as you can see, and maybe if you saw the previous video, my little teaser, the 1981 Alfa Romeo Spider is back in my garage. This is Doc's car. Uh, Doc purchased this car from me, and I delivered it to him uh, earlier this year, uh, late spring, early summer. And Doc enjoyed it through the summer and fall. And now it's back to me to uh, do some upgrades. So we've got a few things on tap. Doc's got a small list for me to work through. Some of it's just uh, small things he wants to make adjustments to. And then there are some other, uh, which we're going to call a bit more uh, major adjustments. The first one we'll talk about, I've got sitting on the living room floor. And we'll go in and have a look and do a bit of an unboxing. All right, we are inside the Tush Mahal in the living room, and uh, what better area to unbox some classic Alpha parts? So we've got a big box here from Alpha Holics, and uh, let's get this on the floor. Let's move the coffee table over, get this on the floor, and get it unboxed, and uh, we can see all the shiny bits inside. Any guesses as to what this is? All right, there it is and all its beauty unboxed. This is the brand new Alphaholic stainless steel sports exhaust system. It is uh, part number EXH038 on the Alphaholic site for anybody that's interested in looking it up. It is a two-piece header system, so this looks super nice. So two-piece header. It goes into a uh, Y-pipe after that. And then into a single pipe, which will get rid of the catalytic converter entirely, into the muffler, and then into the exhaust. And I can tell you that that rear tailpipe is much beefier than the stock tailpipe is. And uh, purportedly, this is supposed to give the car an additional 10 horsepower. So we'll see. I know it's going to make this, the uh, car sound much better, so it should also make the car perform much better. 10 horsepower on a little car like that is definitely going to be able to feel that in the seat of your pants. All right, I'm eager to get this on the car, so um, we'll start uh, by taking off the old exhaust system. Um, I am waiting on a few more parts. Uh, there's a fitting kit that I need that has the manifold gaskets uh, and some new manifold nuts, for example, and all of the hangers for this, so that is on its way. But in the meantime, we can start by taking off the old system and setting that aside. It's beautiful. All right, so I guess it's about that time to uh, get the Alpha up on jack stand so we can start the exhaust project. It's not exactly the uh, warmest day outside today. It's actually sleeting outside at the moment. Anyway, we'll uh, back this out of the garage a little bit. We'll move it as far to the left as we can. Just give us a little bit of room on the left-hand side of the garage. So we'll do that first, get it up on stands, and then we'll start uh, getting underneath it. I think what we'll do since this is an exhaust video, I think what we'll do is maybe we'll try to take a little video of the current exhaust note that's on the car before we go to the process of changing that out with that performance exhaust. So maybe I'll set the tripod up behind the car and we'll do a few revs so you can hear the stock exhaust uh, versus the new exhaust once we get it put on the car. We've got the Alpha up on uh, ramps at the front, and we've got four stands at the rear. Two on the stock jack points on the out um, skirts of the body. You can see the red stands there. That's the uh, factory jacking point, or the factory stand point. And then I've got two actually on the rear axle as well. So just for safety before we get under the car. So seven degrees Celsius in the garage, a little bit too cold to work on a uh, cold concrete floor. So we've got the heater going. So we'll take a bit of a break, get it to warm up out here, and then we'll start the process. And we're going to work our way from the back to the front. So I'm anticipating the rear section and the mid section should be pretty easy to get off because they were new, uh, installed about a year ago. 
uh, just stock components and then we move up towards the catalytic converter which is original to the car and I'm sure the fasteners will be a little bit tougher to get off there. Then the most difficult part I'm assuming will be <coughs> getting the manifold off. It's a little bit tight in here and you never know what you're going to run into with the manifold studs so I'm hoping they'll all come out and play nicely but we'll remove a few pieces to get to uh, a little bit better access there. We'll move the air box out of the way and move a few other things out of the way uh, including probably the dipstick. Um, we'll move that out of the way just to get a bit more clearance before we uh, do the final step of getting the stock exhaust manifold off after we, like I said, move our way from the rear of the car up to the front. Alright, time to break out the metric tools. It's uh, jumped up to 15 degrees Celsius out in the garage, so almost 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll get the, uh, the foam pads out, lay them under the car, and we'll get under there and start removing that rear exhaust section as we spoke about. So let's uh, stop yapping and get under there. Alright, not sure how much we're going to be able to film under here, but I'll do my best. So, we're at the uh, connection between the uh, forward muffler and the rear muffler. So, there's a connection right here. Again, these components of the rear here are brand new. So, you can see how nice and shiny these are. So, I don't believe I'll have any problem getting these off. It's towards the front of the car where it'll be more of an issue when we run into the original equipment that's been on the car for over 40 years. So, anyway, we'll go after this... Uh, three bolts here first, or three uh, bolts and nuts holding this flange together and then we'll go after that hanger back there, I'm not sure if you can see that or not but there is a rubber hanger back there that we'll have to uh, have to remove to be able to get the tailpipe off afterwards so let's do this one first and we'll move our way back into the rear and remove that section back there. Alright here's the rear hanger location and uh, you can see the mid muffler up there now detached and we've got the tailpipe section over here so that's off, off successfully so let's go ahead and remove that mid muffler from the catalytic converter this is an 81 so it does have a catalytic converter on it alright here is that uh, mid muffler hanger connection over towards the uh, trailing arms I'm going to call them for the rear suspension and then that leads up to the catalytic converter which is this beehive looking thing here which I believe has a bit of a rattle inside of it uh, so there's three bolts here that need to be undone so these are brand new as well so that should be easy to get off it's going forward as mentioned what will be the tricky part all right let's get these off and move on well, as expected, these uh, bolts here on the catalytic converter leading at the front of the car, which are original to the car, are proving to be an absolute bear to get off. So I think what I'll do is I'll uh, dig out the propane torch and heat them up a little bit. The, the nuts don't look too bad. They don't look that rusty, but uh, they look pretty welded on to the face of this. Uh, but if I could get the nuts off, I could get this off, I'm pretty sure. So we'll try some heat first and uh, if that doesn't work, we might have to resort to uh, grinding these off. Alright, even with the application of heat and a break breaker bar, these are not coming off. I can't get a lot of leverage on them under here. So I think the next step is to try and cut them off, either with an angle grinder or a uh, reciprocating saw, I haven't quite figured that out. Um, I also have a small Dremel, so I'll get them off somehow, but uh, I want to try not to damage it in any way, so we'll do uh, what's going to be the less potential for damage, because I like to have the original parts to be reinstalled if somebody ever wants to put this car back to stock, nice for them to have the original parts. So anyway, we'll try to get it off without doing any damage, or as little damage as possible. So before I cut that uh, catalytic converter off, the other area I was exploring is to try to see how much room I have to try and get the exhaust manifold out and down without detaching the catalytic converter, but it doesn't look like I have a lot of room. That's the windscreen wiper motor right there, kind of in the way. And then at the front there, we don't have much room between the uh, motor mount, so 
may be able to jiggle it around somehow, but there is not a lot of room down there. But anyway, maybe we'll try that first before breaking out the uh, cutting tools and see if we can actually get this uh, manifold off. That's going to probably be the next challenge. Some of these bolts are a little bit difficult to get to. And I'm sure they'll be stuck. Alright, funny thing just happened. <laughs> and Doc will want to see this. So, I just took the air box off. And as I was lifting it off, I noticed something rattling around in there. So, I've just uh, discovered a whole bunch of cat food. So, <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a local squirrel in the area. Or a mouse, basically, that's been stealing some cat food. But apparently that's made its way into the air box. So, I found that quite interesting. So, Doc, you're going to have to do some critter ridder somehow when you get the car back. You're going to have to uh, figure out a way to keep the uh, squirrels or mice out of your engine bay. That's a new one. Alright, with the air box out, a bit more room to play with. Unfortunately, I do not think that's going to go with the manifold attached. Now, there are a couple of downpipe bolts that I may be able to detach, but they're notoriously going to be stuck as well. And again, there's not a lot of access to them. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll figure something out. We'll take this little uh, heat shield off. It'll give us a bit more access as well. So we'll keep digging down, we'll move this dipstick over, get that out of the way, and uh, see if we can get some more room somehow. So there are uh, eight brass nuts total, two per branch of the manifold. We've got four of them off already, one's on the ground underneath the car. So the more difficult ones are the ones below. So like I said, the top ones are easy. Let's go for the ones below and see how we do. Maybe a long extension somehow up underneath there. Anyway, go, go, gadget, small hands. All right, seven of the manifold nuts are off. God knows how I'm going to get to this one way, way back down underneath the pipe here. I looked underneath the car to see if I might be able to reach up and do it from underneath. I'd have to have an awfully long extension, like every extension in the world that I own, to be able to reach that, and it'd still be uh, quite tricky. So... Anyway, we're using all our tools at the disposal. I'm finding that uh, my small ratchet here is uh, coming in handy. This is my uh, wear a ratchet, again, with uh, long extension, short extension, and a wobble. Um, this is coming in handy for this job in particular. So, anyway, down to the last one. And uh, it's definitely trying my patience. The, the, last, the second last one was a bear to get off. It actually came out with the stud, so that was fun. Now, uh, anyway, let's get uh, this attempt actually on the very last one. If I can't get it, I'm going to go in and uh, take a bit of a break other than getting frustrated. And uh, we'll come back out later on and attempt it. Sometimes it works that way. So I've been putting my uh, Marlon Perkins hat on. While I'm trying to get this one last nut off the manifold. And I'm thinking that it was probably a chipmunk or a squirrel putting the cat food into the air box. Because I think it was a mouse. A mouse would have built a nest in there and it would have made a much bigger mess. And it probably would have eaten all the food. Whereas something like a chipmunk or a squirrel, it probably would have hid the food there with the intention of coming back. And never actually made it back. I'm actually leaning towards the chipmunk just because it's smaller in the opening to get into that air box. It's pretty much there. That's how we got in. I'm going to come up through that... Uh, that duct work there and right into the air box. So that's my, my thinking is chipmunk. So anyway, <laughs> this is like, I don't know how actually sometimes you think about, okay, well, if I get it off, how am I going to get back on? So anyway, I'm about three, four threads away from getting this last nut off. I'm just sort of turning it with my finger slowly. Oh, my back's killing me from being bent over. But anyway, I'm getting there. So, to turn you off now, and I'll come back when I'm victorious. Alright, manifold bolt is off. And you can see the manifold is uh, splitting from the head. 
So there is one more fastener below before we try to jiggle this out of here. And again, like I said, I don't think it's going to work, but we'll give it a shot. Um, so I'm going to go do, undo that bolt. It's the bolt that's uh, holding the catalytic converter to the, there's a rubber bushed um, a muffler or exhaust mount down there. So I need to undo those two fasteners down there. And then this will be loose and I'll be able to pull it away. So let me go try that and we'll see if this is going to be a frustration or whether this is going to come out easy. Okay, let's see what you can see. So here's that transmission, the uh, rubber bushed transmission mount. And here's the bracket that's got a couple of fasteners here that holds it to the pipes. So we'll undo these two fasteners and then this should be loose and we'll try to feed this uh, exhaust manifold back down this way and see if we have enough clearance. Wish me luck. Well, if nothing else, I guess some would call it patience. I'm gonna say I'm stubborn. So I'm able to get to the bottom last two fasteners on the manifold to downpipe. So I managed to get two of them off from above and I've managed now to get the other two off from below after I've dropped this pipe down a little bit to be able to reach them. So those are off so technically the manifold and this downpipe should split now. So I'm going to go up to the top again and see if we can get a rubber mallet and see if we can get these to separate. And then this can drop down to the floor and not have me help, you know, worry about trying to pull that uh, exhaust manifold through this little hole here, which was I don't think gonna, wasn't going to happen. All right, guys, I am happy to report that we've got it off without any damage. So it was necessary to uh, disconnect this downpipe. So fortunately, those bolts weren't seized. Otherwise, we would have had a major problem to contend with. Uh, again, I may have been able to split it down there at the catalytic converter connection and bring it up through the engine bay. But uh, once I had this disconnected here, we were good to go. So I think that was going to be my other alternative was to grind those off at this location if I couldn't get these out. So anyway, it all worked out in the end. I am shocked at how heavy this system is, especially this center section here with the catalytic converter. It weighs a ton. So. That new exhaust is definitely going to be a weight saving, so it's probably five horsepower gain just in weight saving. So anyway, that's looking good. Happy to have that off and out of the way. Again, persistence pays off. So we'll have a look at this big empty space over here. I've just done a really quick uh, cleaning, but uh, we're going to do a deeper clean just to get rid of some of that 40 years of uh, road grime down there. So that's looking good. Nice and clean. We've got the uh, Gaskets off the old gaskets. So here are all the old manifold gaskets and uh, Doc has got more of these coming for me. These are pretty flat and used up So we've got new gaskets coming and new brass nuts actually for this uh, I will put that stud in that came out of the one location uh, You can probably see it missing a stud in this location over here So uh, yeah, so all in all that wasn't too bad. It probably took me about three hours to get the old system on off just because again you're dealing with fasteners that have been on there for 40 plus years and uh, some of them are just not going to want to come off. I'm fortunate that the rear part of the exhaust was new and that was pretty easy to take off and I like I said at the very beginning I expected to have a little bit of hassle as I move towards the front so anyway that's it for tonight I think guys we'll uh, probably get out here tomorrow and we'll start figuring out about how to put the new system on and again I'm waiting for a few parts to arrive like those manifold gaskets so I'll have to wait for those to arrive to actually fit this system, the new system up but at least we can get it out lay it, get it out here in the garage lay it out on the floor and uh, we can see what kind of direction we want to do as far as the installation is concerned on that that's it for now guys have a good night and we'll see you back out here whenever <laughs>